Okay, if I can have your attention now, uh, I want to talk about the third part of Master Life called the Disciples' Victory. Now, you've already learned as a disciple that we're at war, and we are fighting Satan every day. And as you dealt with the personality, you learned we fight the world, the flesh, and the devil all at one time. And though you win one battle, well, Satan will be back to fight another day. Actually, we live behind enemy lines. Don't think the battle's out there. We live behind enemy lines, and therefore we've got to be prepared at every moment to go to battle with Satan because he comes when you least expect him. And as a part of the family of God and the army of God, uh, every army has uh, a weak point, and we don't want to be the weak point in the battle. We want to be a part of the victory that Christ gives us. And so I'd like for you to look in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse 10, where Paul tells us about the prayer armor. You see, Paul was chained to a Roman soldier, and so he was very familiar with the armament that the soldiers wore. And so he picked those up. I don't know where he was just waiting there, lying there, looking at the soldier, thinking this has a parallel to the battle that we're fighting as Christians. Now, there are three particular times that this prayer armor that I'm going to share with you can be used effectively. Uh, one of those is when there's a stronghold in your life and Satan just seems to have gotten a foothold there. There's something you can't overcome. It could be an addiction. It could be a habit. It could be a thought pattern or a, a something that you do that you just need the victory over. This gives you some answers for that victory. A second uh, thing that would be helpful or time that this would be helpful would be that when Satan attacks you, there are times in our lives that he attacks us in just seeming a number of ways. And already you have experienced that in master life. No one goes through this kind of training without Satan attacking you in ways you never thought about. And so when you see and are aware that there's an attack of Satan, here's a way to break Satan's attack. I remember one morning uh, I was in Atlanta helping with some witnessing training. I woke up and I felt uh, depressed. And I said, I'm not usually depressed. I don't know why I'm depressed. And, and so I began to uh, think about it. I said, I'm not depressed. I'm oppressed. I, I just feel like there's some oppression on me. And immediately... I just dropped to my knees. I used this very armor, praying through piece by piece that, that the Lord would give me the victory over this spiritual power that I was feeling was working on me. What I didn't know is that day I was going to be called to make a decision that would really alter the course of my life. And maybe Satan knew that. At least I felt like he was trying to stop me and keep me from making that right decision. But I was glad that I was able to just turn to this biblical way of gaining the victory. And then the third time that you would use this would be when you attack Satan. You say, what me attack Satan? Actually, we attack Satan when we try to witness and share our, our testimony or try to lead somebody to Christ. We attack Satan when we have a disciple that he's kept from growing and and. We're about to help him grow as a Christian. Uh, we attack Satan when we pray for people. And so Satan is always trying then to uh, overcome us, but we can attack him, and we're not just passive and on the defensive. We must be on the offensive. So let's look at this passage and, and see some answers that the Lord gives us. Ephesians 6.10, Finally, be strong in the Lord, <laughs> and not in your own might, but in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, not just part of it, the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, like many times we think we're against somebody or somebody's against us, but that's really not the really where the battle is. He said it's against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the evil forces or the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, this sounds almost like a hierarchy of spiritual beings that is fighting. These are part of Satan's group of his army. Whether that's a hierarchy or not, it very definitely stands some who have mighty powers. You know, it may be a power 
like the, the power over the pornography industry or the gambling industry. Uh, it could be over a certain uh, area or a certain process, and we've learned more and more that Satan is holding on to these uh, powerful ways of dealing with us. But he said, be strong in the Lord, and we fight against them. He says, therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil or trial or trouble comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then. So you see, he's, he said stand four times. He said take your stand, uh, stand your ground. After you've done everything, stand. Stand firm then. Stand. In, in fact, uh, this has the idea of the battle's over and you're standing. Mm -hmm. So stand firm, how? With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet shod, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And in addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then notice verse 18 does not mention a part of the armor, but tells you the position of the soldier. And pray always on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So this is a prayer armor to help us pray through whatever we're facing to win the victory and then go out and reap the, the spoils of that victory and to live that out. So let's take uh, this armor. Let me just tell you how I do it. That, that would perhaps be a simple way to, as any for you to remember it. I'm going to do it in a different order than it is here that will help you to remember. I, this goes just from the head of your crown of your head to the bottom of your feet uh, in preparing you for the battle. So first of all, we take the helmet of salvation. And so when I begin to pray, Lord I, Lord, I want to assert that I do have the helmet of salvation in place. And I do two or three things. One, I thank Him that I'm His child. That's what the salvation's about. I know I am a child of God, and greater is He that is in me than is in the world. Then I praise Him for the eternal life that I have, that the salvation that we have is not something that comes and goes with my ability to win the battle. It was won by Christ, and so I have an eternal salvation. That gives me a great deal of confidence going into a battle. Uh, so I praise Him for the fact that I have uh, this eternal salvation. And then the, also the helmet reminds me to claim the mind of Christ, as it says in 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 16, that we have the mind of Christ. So he said we are to have this mind in us. Uh, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 3 through 5, it says, Though we walk in the flesh, we war not after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly or physical, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So it's the mind of Christ bringing every thought into His obedience that gives us the victory. So when we have the helmet in place, we protect the very vital part of our body, which is the head. 